Okay, I think we're all here and I've got uh, 701 on my clock, so we'll call the meeting to order. Karen, would you call the roll, please? Yes, Dr. Beers? Here. Mr. Ramey? Here. Mr. Kotowski? Yes. Ms. Leavenworth? Yes. Mr. Thorson? You're muted. Sorry, here. Thank you. Governor DeWine signed amended substitute house bill 197 into law in the spring and that went uh, through uh, December 1st but then there was another bill that was approved uh, House Bill 404 that allows us to continue to do video meetings as we have been doing uh, later on in this meeting we will be uh, passing a resolution that will extend our capabilities and ensure that we uh, our total compliance with being able to uh, operate at video meetings under House Bill 404. Um, this meeting is a meeting of the West Geauga Local School District Board of Education in public for the purpose of conducting the West Geauga Local School District's business and is not to be considered a public community meeting. There is a time for public participation during the meeting as indicated in the agenda. Please use the chat room function located at the bottom of the page if you would like to be recognized for public participation. Remember that this is a five minute limit for you to address the board and the total time for public participation is limited to 30 minutes. Would you join me in the pledge, please? Mm -hmm. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to, the to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, of America and, and to the Republic, to the Republic for which it stands, stands one, one nation, nation under God, God Indivisible, indivisible with liberty, liberty and justice, and justice for, all. for all. I don't believe there are any additions or changes to the agenda, Karen or Rich? That's correct. Okay. Um, so we, uh, let's see, program reports and presentations. There are none scheduled for tonight. And so we are at uh, the point of public remarks. Does anybody wish to address the board? Certainly nobody in the chat room. Okay, we will move on then to our routine items. Okay. Uh, Karen? Yes. Resolution 390 to approve routine matters of the West Geauga Local Board of Education to include the minutes, the November financial statements for 2020, and the certified substitute list. We'll move. Second. Second. Any questions? I can make some comments on the financial report. Okay. This is our November financial report. This is five months into our financial, into our fiscal year. We have approximately $27 million in investments and in our bank accounts. Keep in mind that we spend about $33 million every year. So this is the first half of our tax collections. Those um, next collections will not come. We won't have any significant dollars coming back in until February of this year or next year. If you look at your Schedule D, which is the operating of the general fund for November, you'll see that we have um, some variances between the year to date between 2020 and 2021. Those are primarily related to the Newberry uh, addition of taxes and expenditures. So those, when you see those large numbers, that's what you're looking at. Foc if we focus on the year-to-date variances from our actual budget, uh, you'll notice that we're very much in line with what we had uh, foreseen so far for the year. Unrestricted grants and aid, that's got a $56,000 variance. There is a, at the, um, in October, they do a true up of our, um, really the number of kids and all that kind of stuff and all the, the items that we have associated with the state foundation. We had an $86,000 increase, and that is what's really contributing to that, that larger than expected variance there. It's a positive variance, but, but it is one that we weren't expecting. When we look at the expenditures, we're seeing favorable variances in our personnel costs and our insurance. Those are related to, we haven't had the hiring of the transportation, um, so the transportation positions that we were trying to do earlier in the year, uh, those have been delayed, one because we are somewhat on remote, and the other is because we're looking for people to take those positions and we're having, um, they're, not, they're not 
we're not getting that many applications for some of those bus drivers that we're looking at. Um, the supplies and materials, we have a positive variance of about $100,000. That's primarily related to the transfer of expenditures from the general fund to the federal fund, the ESSER funds that we have coming from the federal government. So that is in place and you'll see that variance hopefully throughout the year. Uh, Sean and Mark have been working on that with me to make sure that we have all those uh, identified so that we can apply for reimbursement from the federal government through the CARES Act. If you look at the um, food services, this is another area that we've been focused on this year. We received in, uh, in November our first federal subsidy. That was for $38,000. This is under our current uh, summer plan, which has been extended where all students can receive a free lunch or breakfast. Those that are served, and we serve, let's see how many did they serve? They served uh, almost 9,000 of them uh, since the first of the year. So those have been, um, we've applied for reimbursement and received a $38,000 reimbursement. So that will help our cash position in um, that fund. And we will have, uh, with the transfer, we have a 51,000. So we're looking at about, um, we transferred 50,000. So we're kind of at break even right there in the cash position. So we'll continue to monitor that and uh, as we go along throughout the year and see how we're doing. But that's one that we, we've been very focused on. And then the, on the grants, we did receive our foundation grants for the w, West Geauga Educational Foundation. We received about $14,000 in grants. You'll see that later on in the agenda, uh, mostly for Lindsay and Westwood uh, for the reading areas and then uh, athletic streaming for the middle school as well. So that is kind of a brief summary there, but we did have some nice donations there from the foundation. Okay, back to you, Dr. Pierce. Any questions? Okay, would you call the roll, please? Yes, Dr. Beers? Yes. Mr. Katowski? Yes. Ms. Leavenworth? You're on mute, oh, Kathy. You. Yes. Mr. Ramey? Yes. Mr. Thorson? Yes. We look at resolution 391 to approve the warrant for the November 2020 school year. So move. Mm -hmm. Second. Any questions? Call the roll, please. Mr. Katowski. Yes. Ms. Leavenworth. Yes. Mr. Ramey. Yes. Mr. Thorson. Yes. Dr. Beers. Yes. Resolution 392 to approve the 2020 audited financial statements. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Ms. Leavenworth. Yes. Mr. Ramey. Yes. Mr. Thorson. Yes. Dr. Beers? Yes. Mr. Katowski? Yes. That report will be released on December 31st, 2020. Resolution 393 to accept the donations. So moved. Second. Those donations are through West Geauga Plaza for $500, H&M Landscaping $500, M&M Insurance $3,500, and the McDonald's of Chesterland for $822.34. Great. Any questions? To call the roll, please. Mr. Ramey. Yes. Mr. Thorson. Yes. Dr. Beers. Yes. Kotowski. Yes. Ms. Leavenworth. Yes. Resolution 394 to approve it, to accept grant monies awarded to the West Ge from West Geauga Educational Foundation for the 2021 school year in the amount of $14,000 in total. So move. Second. <clears throat> By the yeah. way, um, you know, the Ed Foundation was not able to do the, the um, uh, McDonald breakfast this year. Mm -hmm. So we've been pushing a fundraiser and, and uh, Bill uh, Patterson's and I put some money together for matching funds. So uh, I'm giving you a little advertisement for if anybody would like to donate to the Ed Foundation. <laughs> um, or we missed a, a fundraising. And McDonald's has always been so gracious and so wonderful to, to allow us to use their facilities on Thanksgiving morning. And that didn't work this year. So um, 
you got. If you want to make a donation, we'd be glad to get it. Okay. Okay. Thank you for your effort in the at the founding of the foundation, Kathy, and then all of the years since then and helping to push this along now. No, they're doing well. It's a great group of people who are who are heading that up and, and you know, we're always looking for for people to to uh, submit proposals too because we we are not seeing as many as we'd like to see and and um, we've got we've got money to give. <laughs> Okay, well, I mean, I, I'm always- No, in no, the no, this is for the school, Jeff. <laughs> ah, well. <laughs> well, he's sort of part of the school. Oh yeah, well he is. He's gotta benefit the kids. So come I'll up with I'll give him a ride like in the car that I'm buying. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, if there's no other questions, do you call the roll, please? Mr. Thorson. Dan, you're on mute. Sorry, yes. Dr. Beers? Yes. Mr. Kajowski? Yes. Ms. Leavenworth? Yes. Mr. Ramey? Yes. All right. Thank you. Okay. Rich? Resolution 395 is to approve administrative stipends for work outside of the 2020-2021 contractual year. This was for work that was done over the summer that was uh, COVID-19 related in anticipation of the 2020-2021 academic year. So moved. Second. I would just point out that uh, although we think of the teachers and administrators, uh, administrators in particular, maybe uh, working year round, they really don't have year round contracts except for just a couple of you, uh, Rich and Karen. Um, don't remember if there's anybody else that truly has year round contracts. And the rest of the administrators are on um, less than a year. So when uh, they're working over the summer, getting things ready for school in unusual circumstances like we had this year. That's why this is a, a one-time kind of, of uh, supplement because of the extra work they had to put in dealing with the COVID-19 situation. Any other comments? And we thank you very much for doing that, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's where I was going to go. We, we very much appreciate it. Um, any other comments? <laughs> okay, would you call the roll, please? Dr. Beers? Yes. Mr. Katowski? Yes. Ms. Leavenworth? Yes. Mr. Ramey? Yes. Mr. Thorison? Yes. Resolution 396 is to approve a supplemental contract for the 2020-2021 school year. So moved. Second. And any questions? Call the roll, please. Mr. Kotelski? Yes. Ms. Leavenworth? Yes. Mr. Ramey? Yes. Mr. Thorson? Yes. Dr. Beers? Yes. Resolution 397 is to approve service contracts for the 2020-2021 school year. So moved. So moved. Second. Any questions? Call the roll, please. Ms. Leavenworth? Yes. Mr. Ramey? Yes. Mr. Thorson? Yes. Dr. Beers? Yes. Mr. Kotelski. Yes. Resolution 3, 398 is to approve the 2021-2022 open enrollment guidelines and caps. And Amy Davis is here to answer any questions that the board might have related to these. So moved. We're moved. Okay. Any questions for Amy? I'm it's pretty much straightforward like we've done before, I presume, Amy. It is. I think just for you to know that we very carefully account for the students who are already with us. Um, the biggest difference between last year and this year is Newberry is with us um, now. So we know a lot more than we did a year ago uh, when we're setting the caps. And as always, we want to be careful and make sure that our um, resident students, there's room for them. Um, and then also um, look at staffing and that sort of thing, the usual. Yeah, Amy, how much did COVID affect the number of students we could accept? Um, keep our COVID classes did not at a have uh, an impact, aside from the fact that we had to mm -hmm. delay um, and create a wait list 
Um, I think COVID had an impact on some families because they decided to um, maybe keep their kids at home for another year. Our caps were so conservative last year because we knew that Newberry was coming, um, especially at the elementary level. Uh, that I, I, COVID may have had an impact, but I don't think we saw a lot of students withdrawing um, because of that necessarily. Okay, thank you, Amy. Any other questions? To call the roll, please. Mr. Ramey? Yes. Mr. Thorison? Yes. Dr. Beers? Yes. Mr. Katowski? Yes. Ms. Leavenworth? Yes. Resolution 399 is one that Dr. Beers um, acknowledged earlier. It is a resolution to carry out board meetings via electronic means during the COVID-19 state of emergency. It extends the board's ability to um, hold meetings remotely through July 1st, 2021. So move. Second. I would just point out that uh, this was, um, we had a legal opinion that we could uh, continue without passing this resolution, but we uh, are just dotting the I's and crossing the T's just to make sure that we're really, really complete. Um, do you call the roll, please? Mr. Thorison. Yes. Dr. Beers. Yes. Mr. Katowski. Yes. Ms. Leavenworth. Yes. Mr. Ramey. Yes. Okay. Resolution 400 to approve the enhancement request for the additional scanning services as per agreement with between the SC View Strategic Solution and West Geauga Local Schools. So moved. Second. This will take, this, yeah, go ahead, Karen. This will take care of the scanning services we have for the uh, permanent files, for the student permanent files, and the special ed files that we brought over for Newberry. So this will clean out your boardroom. <clears throat> I haven't seen that in a while. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Take your word for it. We've been using it for a storage space. <laughs> it has been rather full. As the, what, uh, what do we do about uh, storage? Do we have cloud storage for that? So on? is that a Sean question? The storage for this right now, this will be digitized. So we'll have this in place in storage in digital format with the rest of our financial information that we have. We also have an out, you know, a, a storage location, a climate controlled storage location that we have for materials that we have for WestG. So what we've been looking at, Sean and I have been looking at is how we're going to digitize all the West Geauga files that we have in place that are in that storage unit and have a, you know, have a standard digit, you know, digitizing of those records as we go along. Like everyone who graduates will, you know, digitize that in, in, as they graduate. So uh, we're looking at a five-year plan um, we talked a little bit about this with Dr. Beers that um, it's very expensive. Don't get me wrong. I mean, this is just for one, you know, this, this is amount for $26,000 for uh, a portion of Newberry. As we look to ours, it's, it, it'll be in the six figures. So we want to do that for a period of time. We, we're really looking at that, as you recall, what will it be Eastlake when they had the fire, they lost a great many of their permanent files. We're required to keep payroll files, for example, for 75 years. We're required to keep board minutes permanently, I mean, student files. So all of those things, we have to have a, a, a better plan than what we have now. Do we have so to keep those things as paper or will these files replace the need to keep paper? They'll replace our, our need to keep paper. If we look at what we've done on the financial side in the last two years that we've been putting this together is we're completely paperless for uh, payables and receive receipts now. So we don't have, we don't keep any paper receipts at this point. Yeah, and, and how payroll. are things indexed? Like if somebody wants to find them, because that has typically been with paper, right. the big problem we've had, you know, Newberry has complained about it and so on. Okay. So what, what does this mean in terms of being able to retrieve documents? What we'll do is um, strategic solutions is what we use now. And so we're able to look up documents based on the vendor, just for example, for payables the vendor, the purchase order number, or a check number. So it gives us multiple data points to search files. So when we, once they input all of this data, we're going to be sitting down with SC Solutions 
to talk about how we're going to store student files, for example. So we'll use obviously their name, their student ID number, uh, and we may use this, a number, you know, a contact number as well. So a, a phone number or something to that effect. So we'll pick three, we'll pick probably, you know, four data points in order for us to um, retrieve that information. And the good news is you can, it's kind of like board docs, you put in a search and you, it'll bring up all the documents that relate to that. So it'll be very similar to what we're using on board docs as well. Yeah. So d does that mean like the stuff we're doing now, this contract includes that service yes. of basically indexing everything and putting exactly. that? And so when you're, you're talking about sort of the nebulous cost of doing it in the future, what, whatever we're going to do would include that too, so that we have. Right. It's about a penny a per, per page. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, so we'll look at that. And some of the documents that we have are, they expire in five years. So we don't really want to spend our time uh, digitizing those because, you know, you don't need them for five years and some things, it just depends on our re records retention policy that we've had approved by the Ohio Historical Society. Yeah. yeah. What do we spend on physical storage anyway? Uh, we spend about $400 a month. Oh, okay. Yeah. So not too bad, but certainly, you know, it adds up over the years. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like the main advantage is everything then can be retrieved without a great effort. That I mean, is because we must effort. spend a certain amount of money every year sending people to go retrieve things when people ask for have requests right i see amy's head bobbing it must be that she's the primary retriever she is <laughs> <laughs> every time we have to go retrieve something it's about a hundred dollars i see that hair she's a golden retriever i mean so a number of board groans in unison there were some groans on that so we are looking at you know this is something we'll be talking with uh, the next board president because they'll have the next meeting in place we'll look at that and, and talk really about the records retention policy that we have in place and how we we've already got the the our policy approved by the ohio historical society uh, and then we just need to talk about how we'll implement some of those things yeah do do uh i i sure the board wants to move on but i did want to ask um are we able to digitize things like building plans and so on? Because I know from other things I've worked on, often these plans over the years get lost or they get so frayed and so beat up from being used by maintenance people and contractors that they're you know, fragile and not often available. Right, and so Shauna had some discussions about creating what we would call a permanent file, things like those items that are, um, blueprints of our buildings, you know, in Newberry. We have some that are digitized now, uh, but there are some things that we just need to keep in place that are permanent, like all the deeds to all the buildings need to be in a one location. So we want to have those available and, and, and digitized in one location so that we're not, you know, your administrative team turns over. So we want to make sure that they're not in my files. We want to make sure that they're not in Sean's files, that they're in one location that we have available to us that anyone could access on the administrative team that needed to do so. Okay, thanks, Karen. It's a big project, so we'll, you know, that'll be coming to the board uh, in 2021. Document, document retention is a, is a complicated subject. It is, and so we would offer, you know, any help on that would be very much appreciated. Okay, any other uh, questions about that? To call the roll, please. Dr. Beers. Yes. Mr. Kotowski? Yes. Ms. Leavenworth? Yes. Mr. Ramey? Yes. Mr. Thorson? Yes. Thank you. Uh, next item is the appointment of a president pro tem for the organizational meeting. And I'll make the motion that we uh, uh, appoint Ch Chester Ramey as president pro tem for the organizational meeting on January 11th, 2021. Second. Second. Any discussion? To call the roll, please. Mr. Kotowski. Yes. Ms. Leverworth. Yes. Mr. Ramey. Yes. Okay. Mr. Thorson. Yes. Dr. Beers. Yes. Thank I'm you. glad so Chet said yes. I know, I was waiting. I hesitated. <laughs> you might say no just just cuz <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not that contrary yet 
<laughs> Wait a month. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Rich, do you have anything you want to uh, share with us in the superintendent's report? Yeah, just real quickly, uh, today marks the day of, of returning to in-person learning at the high school so that all of our students, grades K-12, are, are now back in session, um, minus the students who have, have chosen the virtual um, model for this year. This is a, a week of midterms, so um, mm. It's obviously a, a week where the, the kids have a certain degree of anxiety and the teachers as well, seeing how they, they finish out the first semester preparing for winter break. And yes, I did say finish out the first semester. Seems hard to believe um, in this era of COVID-19 that we have finished half the year now, but the 17th of December marks the end of the first semester for our students. Um, this is a reminder also that on the, the 18th is a records day for our teachers and then our, our students and our staff begin winter break. Uh, winter break would normally end for us on January 4th. But we've decided uh, in light of COVID-19 and the possibility of students contracting the virus over winter break that we will remain remote for one week after winter break so that all of our students will go on a remote learning model that would be from January 4th through January 8th. And the plan at this point in time is to resume in-person instruction for all of our students, K-12, who choose the in-person model on um, January 11th, 2021. That's it. Okay. Anybody have any questions for Rich? Okay, uh, next item is board reports. Uh, is Anybody have uh, something they want to report to the board? Okay, uh, this is uh, our last regular meeting for the year. Um, hopefully we <laughs> don't have to call any uh, special meetings. Um, I've uh, enjoyed the times working with uh, the board uh, as president this year and also getting to know the administrators a little bit better this year. And um, looking forward to uh, coasting next year. <laughs> so thank you very much. Um, we uh, will move into executive session. I have a motion to uh, go to executive session to discuss personnel matters, including appointment and or employment, discipline and compensation. Um, we may or may not be taking uh, action after the executive session. Um, and we will ask uh, Rich, Karen, and Nancy to join us. Is there a second? Second. Would you call the roll, please? Ms. Leavenworth? Yes. Mr. Ramey? Yes. Mr. Thorson? Yes. Dr. Beers? Yes. Mr. Kotowski? Yes. Okay, uh, no action to be taken after executive session. Wait, wait a minute. Um, wait, I may have. Hey, Karen, I need a, um, a records request for all the meetings of Mike Kilroy. How many executive <laughs> sessions he might have had in his tenure? And, and you can just get that to me at any time for the end of the year. Okay, I'm good. <laughs> hey, Dan's, Dan's a real numbers guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Motion to adjourn. Second. We already did this. Yeah. Sorry. I didn't have that. All right. Dr. Beers? Please. Yes. Mr. Katowski? You're mute, Ben. <laughs> okay. Yes. Blink, blink Mr. Hands if you need help. Yes. Mr. Ramey? Yes. Mr. Thorson? Yes. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. To all of you. Yeah. Yes. Happy holidays. All Happy holidays. Holidays. Everyone. Thank, Thank you. Day. Thumbs up to Bill for a job well done this year. Yeah, nice yeah. job, Bill. Was, was great.